it's 15 to 20, so it's kind of neato. Anyway, so we're going to go through some of the items in Ravenloft. We're going to talk about them, what they what they can mean for your characters, and um, you know that sort of thing. We're going to take a look at the heroic items, because we can just extrapolate what the effects are on the legendary ones. Actually, we should probably look at the legendary items because that's pretty much all that matters. And we're gonna look at the heroic ones because it's just easier to look at. If you're looking for the, if you want to look at the raid gear, the raid loot is not available yet. Um, but we're just gonna go through the items quickly, kind of detail out some of the interesting, just interesting ideas that they were gonna go for there. Because uh, there's not too many, and then afterwards we're gonna take a look at some of the some of the quests or like one of the quests and uh, the social space. So to start off, we've got the Mist Fallen Orb. Uh, so this is an orb that does block and bonus. Diversion, Spell Focus Mastery, Illusory Death. So what the idea here is they got Insightful Spell Focus Mastery to give you Insightful DCs to all your spells, and then they went back to something they didn't do before, which is increase the cash level. And they might think to yourself, why does cash level matter? Cash level and Illusion and Necromancy spells? Who cares? Those things don't require cash level for anything. They do for overcoming spell resistance. This is technically almost like a plus one spell resistance. Is this orb good? Probably not. I would not recommend using this orb, um, but it is interesting, to say the least. Next we have the War Sword Shield. The most important thing to notice about the shield, it is a small shield that deals a 2d6 base damage, which means you can actually use it effectively as a vanguard, which is very interesting. On top of that, it's got sheltering, insightful magical sheltering, insight, and repost. This is just a good vanguard shield for leveling. In fact, I would argue to say it is probably the best one. Oh, for level 10, it is the best one for sure, up until level 14 when you get access to the um, the demonic slab. So decent, decent looking shield. I don't know how it looks. Uh, I wonder how it looks. Can I buy that? Ooh. I'm just curious. How does the shield look? It looks like the Demonic Slab. So I'm assuming that the art's not in yet, unless it actually looks like the Demonic Slab when it comes out. If it does, I will be so disappointed it'll be beyond belief. All right, next item on the list, we have the Blur Fingered Gloves. They give you quick draw of the feet. Now this is something that is not in the game enough, which is feats added onto gloves. Feats being added onto gloves is great. We're not gloves, but items in general, because it means that you can either build it your character around having this item. So let's say you're like me, and you're like, man, I love quick draw, but I don't want to take it. I can bank on the fact my end game character might just wear these gloves to get quick draw, and then I have access to the feet. I think it's really cool. Um, it's something they just don't do enough, and I'm really glad they did it here. But quick draw feet, lesser displacement, and meta magic and maximize. This is just good gloves no matter what character you're playing. 25% um, concealment is like amazing on a stat and quick draw on gloves. Even if you're a melee, you're gonna want to play. You're gonna want to use this. It, this is really good. Uh, Flight foot greaves, freedom of movement, speed, natural armor, reflex saves. This is just a good item. These are just good boots. And I'm assuming at max level they're gonna be still good boots. Freedom of movement is always a good effect. Constant freedom of movement is unbelievable. Plus you got some movement speed. Plus you got natural armor. Plus you got reflex saves. So it's obviously really good. Um, so I highly recommend these boots in heroics, and they'll probably be even better in epic difficulty. Next, you got Mantle of Fury. Uh, Mantle of Fury, an interesting item. It's based on rage. So this is actually really weird because it's a cloak that gives double strike and dodge, both good stats, things you don't see that too often, especially for level 10. And it gives you rage resilience, which is rage bonus to fortitude save. Now, you don't really need more fortitude, sa fortitude saves while raged, but you never know. It could come in handy, but it's interesting to have an item that actually works with rage, and it's also on a cloak, which is probably the slot you're going to be using the least as a barbarian or raging type class. Most classes uh, that use their cloaks, they use them either for, like, charisma, uh, you know, one of the intelligence-based stats, or evasion or dodge or some kind. This does dodge as well as constitution and double strike. Very interesting cloak. Um... You know, I, I like the way they were going here. Uh, it's, it's definitely a good item to look for. Root and Sigil Belt. This item is just terrible. I mean, it gives you plus five spell saves and quality fortification and protection from evil. The problem is protection from evil is really easy to come by. Um, quality fort doesn't matter. Plus fort doesn't matter in spell saves. I mean, like plus five spell saves is good, but you can Candice craft a better item than this. So this is a this is a pass on the Root and Sigil Belt. I would pass this item if you get it. Uh, Silver Thread Cloak, Insightful Evocation Focus, Fortification, Sheltering, Wisdom. This is just a bunch of st good stats on one item that could be good. I don't know. This is not going to be better than the, um, uh, what's it called, the Shaman's Ring or whatever from uh, Mines of Tethumar. But it does have some good stats. Like, you're not going to be upset with Physical Sheltering fort or Fortification. Insightful Evocation Focus, while you can get plus two from Kaneth Crafting, um, in fact, you can make a plus six item with Invite Evocation 2. This basically gives one extra stat on Kaneth Crafting, and it's on a cloak. It's interesting. Um, yes, you could call it a Monk Cloak, actually, but it's got an Evocation Focus. I don't know. It's like a weird Cleric Cloak. Vistani Fighter Sash. I'm assuming this is good for a Vistani Knife Fighter build. Stunning, Garbage, Vertigo, Garbage, Deadly 5, eh... Vitality 19. Yeah, this I would this is another pass on the on the belt. Uh, you, you can pick it up for the vitality because it's vitality bonus, so it's actually 20 life. Maybe if you don't have deadly, it could be okay, but I'd pass on that one. 
Barovian Nobles Regalia. Universal spell lore and exceptional universal spell power. This is Crazy Town 3000. This is pretty much something that's going to be better than most most items. I won't, I'm curious as to how it looks. So we're just going to put it on and see if it has an appearance of some kind. And it does have an appearance in the game. And it looks rad as hell. I'm going to get rid of this shield here so we can take a look. But as you can see, it's got like a little a signet on the necklace here. I like this a lot. That is a fantastic looking... Uh, item. I'm actually very curious now. We're going to look at the epic version of this because I want to see how ridiculous this item is. Uh, yeah, like the rune sickled belt. It's like, 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 look at this. Like, oh, yay, spell saves or whatever. There's other items that are better. Like Mantle of Fury. Actually, Mantle of Fury is kind of crazy. This item is pretty ridiculous. Uh, if you're playing a barbarian, I would highly recommend this item. Like, look how crazy those stats are. Same with, like, the flight foot degrees. Actually, these are whatever. You could pass on this item. But anyway, I'm getting distracted. No Bravian Novels. 10% exceptionally bonus to spell lore. This is going to be probably a best in slot for almost every single uh, caster in the game. 10% bonus to spell crit is too much. Uh, so get this item. Get this item in Heroic. Get this item in Epic. 10% extra. This means some classes will be able to push upwards of 70% spell crit, which is very, very, very good and a little too consistent for my tastes. But... Anyway, next we got the Blightstone Core. Hey, it's the Warforged equivalent of the Super Broken item. Good work. I thought Warforged were going to get left out. And the Mistlade Investment, it's a bunch of schlock. Don't get this. It's just, it's like, it's just good stats. Like, it's like fortification, parrying, whatever. You can get these on other places. What's up, Clone Bone? How you doing? Curse Bane Focus. This is the first of a few items that have a new stat called Curse Resistance. I don't know how big curses are going to be in Ravenloft, but I'm assuming pretty big because Curse Resistance is all over the place. So this is Curse Resistance, Will Saves, Spell Saves. So realistically, against curses that are spells, you need a plus, or that are Will Saves, you need a plus 12 just from wearing this item. Is that good? It depends on how good, or how many curses you're going to have to go up against. I don't know if this is a great item, but it seems interesting. Uh, Dawn's Herald Charm gives... A bunch of shit for turn undead. So this is probably the best turn undead item in the whole game. I would hazard a guess. Um, Insightful Faith, Sacred, and Hallowed. So this gives a bunch of different turning stats. Makes anybody makes this so anybody can turn. And I'm curious to look at the legendary item now. I don't want to do this all the time, but how do they make a legendary out of that? The Insightful Faith, Sacred, and Hallowed are basically the same. It just gives higher wisdom. So that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah, then you definitely haven't been here in a while, Elmo, man. It's been probably a long time. Uh, Keylock ring. All the rogue stats in one item! Good job! That's a great ring. Go get this if you're a rogue. Look at this. All the rogue stats in one item. Disable, open lock, search spot. Uh, God. Lore fueled pack banner. I don't know what lore fueled is. To tie this around your paws and feel the spirit of the wilds course through your veins. Hmm. Few items with insightful double strike. Pretty much, I feel a feeling because this is insightful double strike. You're probably going to get about 12 or 13% on this at level cap. This is essentially going to be an essential item. You're going to want sheltering. You're going to want insightful con. You're going to want insightful double strike. And if you're in animal form, getting wilderness lore or PR equal to half your wilderness lore feats is interesting. But the insightful double strike is crazy. Yep. Open. What is it? What? what? Open. OPSF ring? I don't know what that is. Uh, Negotiator Spectacles. It just gives that 10% cooldown. Diplomacy, quality diplomacy, subtle target. Ooh. Once per minute, when you use diplomacy, you get 100% propane bonus to stealth threat generation, or minus 100% threat generation for, with weapon strikes. Now, I don't know why it's only weapon strikes, but I do find this interesting. This is a really, really good item. If you can have a character that has a decent amount of diplomacy, let's say you're playing as a rogue, you put points in your diplomacy with this, especially on the level cap, this is going to be adding, I think, like 35 or something diplomacy. Plus 35 diplomacy means you can diplo whatever, and you will never pull aggro with your attacks. That's really good. So, Negotiator Spectacle, you might actually consider using it, especially in like some kind of raid, to guarantee you're always hitting sneak attack, and monsters are never attacking you. So I do recommend that. Perfect Pinnacle. Holy shit, this is a monk item. Look at this garbage. While you're sent to this item, grants you the bonus depending on your current monk stance. Yeah, I'm going to buy that and see what that does. Oh, what's this? Sheltering Ring? Get out of here. All right. Adherent of the Mists. Oh, and apparently this has a set bonus on now. When you have five pieces equipped, ten profane bonus hide, move silently, and intimidate, fear immunity, your weapons have vampirism. Let's turn on a stance. Ocean stance. So now we have Beyond the Tide. While you're centered, your attacks have a chance to knock down the target. In fire stance, your attacks have caused a blind and fear. 
Let's go Earth Stance. 10 insight bonus to armor and reflex saves. Oh my god. And 2d6 electric damage per hit and also cause your target to bleed. So Perfect Pinnacle is going to be an essential monk item. It has concentration, stunning, deadly, extra fist damage, and this extra garbage. Basically while you're in Ocean Stance, it's got the knockdown, or in Fire Stance, it has the blind. Holy crap. This is amazing. So... Not perfect pinnacle, essential item. Ring of Nightfall, Insightful Intelligence, Insightful Deadly, Reflex, Physical Sheltering. I don't know. Just slap this on any repeating crossbow build and you'll be fine. Insightful Deadly is kind of good. And the Symphonic Lenses, the last one on the first tier. Charisma, Performance, Anthem, Feet Mobility. Yeah. yeah, I don't know who would use this. You think a bard, but why would a bard want extra perform and why would a bard want Anthem? You already have enough songs and you don't need mobility, so... Yeah, I would probably not use this item at all. I'm curious to see what the Ring of Light Nightfall does in the Epic, so we're going to check that out. Just to see. Uh, Legendary Pinnacle. This is the Monk item at level cap. Concentration 22, Stunning 22. Uh, greater Kinetic Fist, so it boosts your damage by a die and Deadly 16. So yeah, this is a must-have Monk item. I highly recommend this. That's amazing. Uh, does the Symphonic Lenses get better? No. A lot of these items don't really get better. It's you know, Insightful Intelligence 9 is obviously good. Negotiator Spectacle, yeah, that's 27 extra diplomacy, so it's still a good item. I would highly recommend that. This stuff, 10, this is 10 Insightful Double Strike is just too good. All right, cool. So that's one set of items. We're going to the next one. If this seems boring to you and you don't want to check out the items, I apologize. I get excited by the stats and how these can play into stuff. And we have a whole other set to go. So next is the best defense, large shield. Now, you're going to notice this is a D8 shield. It is not a... Uh, 2d6s like the last shield however this is a dps shield and they learned their lesson yes standing stone games so when standing stone games made um a shield previously it, it was meant to be a dps shield and it was in uh legendary or the slave lords i can't remember what it's called it's so bad anyway it's a slave lord shield and it looks like it's really good it's got like shield bashing on it and it's really cool but nothing scales nothing does any damage oh my god it's the worst thing in the game because it doesn't do anything this is amazing. It's got fiery, so it does damage. It has shield bashing, which you generally want if you're a shield bashing build. It has impact, so it's got the improved threat range, which you can't get on shields. And it's got Vorpal, man! This shield's awesome! Doesn't do fire damage, though. If it had fire on here, that'd be even cooler. And now we're gonna buy it and see how it looks, because you gotta know how dope the shield is. Ooh, and how dope is the shield? It looks exactly like uh, all the other shields, so that kind of blows. And, uh, ooh, Dark Glide. Thank you for hosting me, man. I will try to be not so boring. All right. And no, we're not skipping. Yeah, Breaker of Bodies. Worst shield in the game. The worst goddamn shield in the whole goddamn game. Goddamn. All right. Next is Crumbling Gloves. Insightful Dex, Quality Intelligence, Shatter. Uh, and Shatter? Why is there Shatter on this? I don't know. I think somebody was like, oh, well, let's put Dexterity on it. And then Intelligence, and maybe a Rogue would use it. But then let's put Shatter in case one of those Artificers wants to use it. And then Physical Sheltering. I don't know what this is about. So, uh, it could be good. Face Cloak. Uh, obviously amazing. Intelligence, Evocation Focus, Quality Intelligence, Wizardry. This is just a good item. Just use this if, you use, if you're an Intelligence-based caster. Artificer, Wizard, doesn't matter. Just use it. Good. Uh, Shadow Hail Cloak. No, like, nothing to say here. It's just a good cloak. Um, Shadow Hail Cloak. Hide with silently Deception 4 and Ghostly. So this is the new low-level Ghostly item. Hopefully this won't be too difficult to farm. Once you get one of these, you can always have Ghostly hitting level 10, which is really great. Uh, when you wear this cloak, you are somehow able to see in the darkest of nights. Your foes, however, cannot. I like that some of these have very good flavor text. This cloak is emblazoned with the indecipherable symbol. It's going to more closely. It looks like the symbol is written in blood. Ooh, spooky. Again, this is going to be great for helping you uh, manage Reapers in the low level, that sort of thing. So good item. Um, hide, move silently, deception, not really the stats you want all the time, but just ghostly and deception enough are going to be un uh, enough to warrant this a slot in any type of character that does melee. Shadow Soul Footsteps. Dex, Insightful Dodge, Seeker, and Accuracy. Now, if you know me, you know how Insightful Dodge is a stat you don't need. Uh, any of the classes that can hit the dodge cap or up the dodge cap will already be hitting it and be able to go past that. So Insightful Dodge you don't need. Uh, but Dex, Seeker, Accuracy, those are just good stats. I could see you using this regardless on your, of your build. I mean, at level cap, you got like Dex 19, probably Accuracy 32, Seeker 16. I mean, it's probably going to be a decent item. thing is, you're still going to be wearing Ring of Prowess, likely, unless you can get enough stuff to synergize and replace it. So are you going to use this? I don't know. 
Move like the light, silent and move like the night, silent and omnipresent. Ooh, I like it. It gives you that chill. A lot of cloaks here. A lot of cloaks. Uh, twist all the cloak. Transmutation, transmutation, zero. They gotta fix that. They gotta fix that. But transmutation, transmutation, spell penetration, and natural armor bonus. Well, the odd thing about this cloak is that it actually is worse than if you just made goggles. If you make goggles of transmutation focus, you can actually get more transmutation focus here. Um, so I would not recommend this cloak ever. So ignore the twist hollow cloak. Unless this quality is like plus two, ignore it. Because plus one is not enough. Coat of the Traveler. And the reason why, if you're ordering Transmutation Focus, the only spells that matter, uh, it, well, the only spell that matters is Disintegrate, and it's not here, so. Um, Coat of the Traveler. Generic, good, medium armor. So wear it if you want generic, good, medium armor. We're going to see how it looks. Uh, Dread Cursor Defender. This is a docent. That's level 15 for some reason. Dread Curse Defender. Don't count me out. Your range of an unconscious extends by 400 hit points. Is this good? Well, with the new changes... This could actually be amazing. This could probably be the perma solo cloak. If you want to solo, you could probably solo anything in the game. Uh, so with this, uh, once you get knocked down below negative, uh, monsters will cease attacking you now. So you can just get knocked down negative and keep getting back up and probably fight anything you want in the game unless you get one shot below minus 400. So unless you're running super high reaper mode, Dread Curse Defender is probably the best solo item in the whole game. That's interesting. All right, next. Add version. Abjuration, abjuration, abjuration. What the hell are the abjuration spells? DDO abjuration spells. We're going to look this up right now, because... Spells by school. Spells by school, abjuration. All right, so we're going to go through all the abjuration spells, because this gives plus six, which means it's going to give a lot at endgame. So let's see what we got here on abjuration spells, just to, to verify. A blade of armor, no. Angel skin, no. Banishment. Uh, so you could banish stuff, break enchantments, whatever. You could dismiss stuff. Do 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 do. This doesn't have a uh, greater glyph of warding. Do do. There's no save. Well, unless they add more spells that I don't know about. Like if they add spells, it's cool. But banishing and dismissing. Do you want an item for just dismissal? From what I understand, if you try to dismiss enough. In Barovia, on in Ravenloft, it won't actually disappear. So, I don't know about that. Seems like garbage. If there's cool abjuration effects, it could be good. Or if you have to dismiss a lot, it could be good. Because you just slap on one item, but... Blech. All right, Brace of the Fallen Hero, next. Uh, strength, Stunning, Con, Sheltering. Just a decent generic strength thing. So that's fine. Yeah, but Holy Aura sucks. So, I would not recommend casting that. Oops, I left myself in Discord. My bad. All right, next, Curse Bane Ring. Gives you Death Block. Gives you Insightful Curse Resistance and Health. This is just a great item. Death Block and Health on a Ring. You know what? Ring slots are pretty easy to have as spares, so Death Block and Health on a Ring is pretty good. I do recommend this item. Plus, it's got Quality Magical Sheltering. It's just decent. It's just a good item. Then we got Death Warden. That also has Death Block. With Healing Lore, Exceptional Devotion. If you're playing a Healing Class, get this. This is just the best healing item. There you go. It's got death block. It's going to have healing lore probably 30 or 31. You can have exceptional devotion probably like 30 um, on this at cap. Plus empower healing. Plus maybe some other shit. Death Warden is a great healing ring. Highly recommend it. This actually synergizes. And it also synergizes perfectly with the belt that you can get out of uh, black and blue. Because the belt doesn't have any of these stats. They're both level 10. Kindred Pendant. Gives you Augment Summoning. Is that good? I don't know. Gives you Charisma and Enchantment Focus. And honestly, this isn't that bad. Um, if you're playing as any kind of Warlock, you're going to be charming stuff. So Enchantment Focus is just good to have. Just carry around. What's up, Sesta? How you doing? Wait, the Devotion says negative? Uh, it does. Devotion, negative spell power. Well, that's a mistake. So, good work. Good catch, team. Um, augment Summoning. It's kind of good. Would you use this? I don't know. Probably not. I probably wouldn't use this. This is... I don't know. If I was playing Warlock and leveling, I would use it. At end cap, level cap, there's better items than all this stuff. Unless there's like super duper augment summoning, I will check Kindred Pendant after. Reflective buds, Bloodstone. Illusion, Illusion, Spell Pen. Now you're going to notice the theme here. They have items focused for transmutation. Nobody uses. Abjuration, nobody uses. Illusion, nobody uses. But they're supercharged. You got Illusion, Illusion, Spell Penetration. So this is like... A lot of really good stats and magical sheltering. Honestly, this is a fantastic item. Uh, usually, you can make you can basically make this illusion, insightful, and spell pen on goggles. Plus, it gives magical sheltering. Plus, it gives blue. 
uh, augment slots, and you can put it on your necklace. So I think Reflective Bloodstone is a fantastic item. 10 out of 10 if you play use illusion spells. If you don't, dumpster. Skull Ring, the Necro item. There it is, exceptional notification. There you go. So exceptional notification, temp exceptional bonus to positive spell power. <laughs> Necromancy focus, Necromancy focus, wizardry, cool. I'm assuming it's just a good Necromancy item. Summoner Spectacles, Conjuration Focus, Insightful Conjuration Focus 2, Spell Pen, Mythic Diversion. So, depending on what you use, one of these items is going to be good for you. As long as you don't use Evocation, because Evocation does not get an item here. Um, there's a Rune Armor or whatever, it doesn't matter. Alright, so now I'm going to put on this armor, this Coat of the Traveler, because I want to see what it looks like. Do, do, do. Come on, Coat of the Traveler. Ooh! This is... I think this is already in the game! Is this a new item? I think this is already in the game. I'm not sure. I can't tell. I think this looks like one of the leather armors at a Evening Star, but it might not be. I think this is new. I can't tell. And because I'm done twisting people's arm, or jerking around, we'll look at Blight Purge, the rune arm. We're also going to look at the, the max level of Blight Purge. We have Blight Purge. It is combustion, quality combustion, and fire lower on exploding fire shot. Wow. That's good. That's good. Ooh. Ooh, this is good. Because Exploding Fire Shot is just good. And then you have Combustion Quality, Combustion Fire Lore. Rune Armor Charge Fire. And Tier of Splendor, so you get silver. Oh, for you can just get silver for free. That's kind of key. Cool. It's kind of neato. Okay, I'm going to go back and we're going to look at some of those items on Legendary. Because I want to see how a couple of them have changed or become Legendary. One of the ones is the Legendary Blight Forge. Does it get any new items? No, it's just Combustion Quality, Combustion, and Fire Lore. Cool. Yeah, some of the items are like that. I don't know why. Um, that is just conjuration, is whatever. Uh, wow! Legendary Skull Ring gets 400 mana and Necro 8, so that's a little high. Uh, Bloodstone is whatever. Magic Sheltering 50, that's kind of cool. Uh, it still just gives Augment Summoning, okay. Kindred Spirit still just gives Augment Summoning, so that's terrible. Um... Cursed Defender doesn't go up past 400, so this needs to be changed because it's not good enough. And all this other, like this, like, oh, poor Transmutation Cloak. It's still bad. Yeah, Seeker 19, Accuracy 31, Dodge 9%. Yeah. And a bunch of schlock. And then this item, of course, once you hit level 29, just having regular Ghostly is not good enough because it's better than that at that point, so I recommend it. Also, this cloak is amazing. It's Legendary Phase Cloak. 19 Intelligence, Quality 4, Wizardry. That's a good item. Is Legendary Best Defense even better? 3.5, and it does 2d8s. So this item, actually, there you go. There's the best shield in the game, by the way. Uh, is it the best shield in the game? It might be. This is very close. It's got Sovereign of Oracle, It's got Impact, 5. It's got Shield Bastion, 31. This might be the best shield in the game for DPS. Maybe. Its base damage is lower, but... We're looking close. Monk's Dance is probably do upgrade in the Epic version. I don't... I can't wear it yet. I'm not high enough level. All right, we're on the last set of items, so if you don't like me reviewing items for 30 minutes, too bad. All right, so we got the Mirror Plate Tower, um, which looks like one of the other items. looks like the uh, one of the Raid Shields, so we're not going to look at the effect of it because it doesn't have one. Uh, we've got Spell Saves, Magical Sheltering, Block Elements, which is just good. we got Mirror Shield, Highly Polished and Highly Reflective. While blocking, you gain 50 Insight Bonus to Magical Resistance Rating. This is an unbelievable shield. This makes this is probably like a god tier tank shield. If you look at this at like endgame, it means you can ignore insightful magical resistance rating and get 50 from just this item. This makes it also possible to get above 250 or probably even 300 magical resistance rating on a tank build. This is unbelievable. We'll take a look at it when it's at cap. Holy crap. Van Richten's cane. This is not a cane, this is a buckler, but it's a buckler that does 2d6 damage. Holy smokes. Legendary Vampire Hunter Rudolf Van Richten was prepared for e every eventuality. With his sword cane, you will be too. And now, we have to buy it. But no, it looks like the Devil's Shield, so it doesn't have a look. But man, sword cane? I can't wait to see what the sword cane looks like. 2d6's Bard Shield, Stunning Riposte Shield Bash on Deadbane. It's not a cane. Come on, guys. You know it's not a cane. Don't get had. You've been had. You've been had. It's the shield of the small or the small shield of the devil soldier. Hey, what's up, Baker Bildo? Next, we got the braided cut cord, quality dodge, blurry death block, diversion, 
great to put on if you need something. There are new weapons, but they aren't as exciting, so we'll see that in a sec. Um, blurry death block, whatever. If you don't have blurry death block, put it on. If you have those stats, ignore this. Burn scar sash. This is awesome. Corrosion, combustion, acid, fire. This is awesome. This is like a perfect sorcerer item. This is good for cleric. This is good for all different classes. I highly recommend the burn scar sash. It's just a cool item. Good stats. Good combinations and stuff. Uh, knife palm. Assassinate three for level ten. This is stupid. You don't get assassinate until level twelve. So what the hell? Bluff. Deadly. It's evil diversion. How about skip this item? Man, a lot of these items are just skippable. But, actually, that's not true. Mirror Plate and Van Richten are just too good. Those are good. Plate Shard Belt. Fortitude, Quality Fortitude Spell Saves. I swear I looked at this weapon already. Or this belt. I think I looked at an item that's just like this. I don't know. I guess it's okay. I have no opinions on this. It's just a belt with stats. Uh, breath Weapon Focus on the Scarlet, Spiel, Scarlet Scale Cloak. That's pretty good. If you use Breath Weapons, you probably don't. But if you did, you can be a Dragonborn. If you're not a Dragonborn, don't wear this. Made to resemble Dragon Scale, the cloak isn't much protection versus an open flame, but nothing looks better on a Dragonborn. Ooh. Ooh, Silver Thread Belt. This is cool. You want to play your Necro Cleric? This is a perfect item. Positive, negative. It's a great item for Necro Cleric. Highly recommend. Soft Soul Slippers. Anthem Perform. Insightful Charisma. How about skip this item? That's terrible. And he even has the other. That's not done yet. TBD Gloves. Plus 10 Animal Handling. Ooh, animal handling. Uh, well, TBD gloves are interesting because, like, the, the animal handling is a stat we haven't really seen on many items before. And it's really difficult when you're talking about, like, your handle animal skill. Like, when you try to ride a horse uh, or tame a new animal that you just caught, let's just say, you know, you and your party, you're out in the woods and you catch, like, a wolf, right? So you catch him in a trap or something. Uh, you can use your handle animal skill to try to, like, keep him calm as you get him out of the trap and maybe even try to, like, tame this animal. But again, you got to have a good handle animal skill. So plus 10 hand animal handling would be good on the TBD gloves. Um, so I do recommend you you keep on a lookout for the TBD gloves in the future. Could be a pretty good item. Um, yeah, animal handling. Charming Sparks Cord. Hey, Magnetism Glaciation. If this was around when I had my uh, Ice Lightning Sorcerer, my Storm Sorcerer, that would be great. But it wasn't. So screw you too, video game. <sighs> it's a good item, though. Kindred Spirit, the light armor version. Ooh, it's the light armor version. So apparently, this is... Well, this is a light armor that gives... This is the highest max dex bonus for, like, level 10. And it's got the don't count me out. Good for light armor. I, I recommend it. Uh, Plate mail of the Barovian Lord. Ooh, why can't I equip this? I'm going to put this on. Plate mail of Barovian Lord. Uh, it's generic heavy armor with a lot of armor on it. And apparently max text bonus of 8. That's weird. Beer Gaze. Intimidate item. Garstone Lenses. Ooh, what is going on here? Auto Repair. Insightful Rune Arm Focus. New stat, boys and girls. Uh, insightful Rune Arm Focus. Plus 2 to DC, Insight bonus to DC of Rune Arms. That's cool. They didn't have that before. And Magnetism and Devotion. I feel like this should be Repair. But I don't know. Maybe. Also, you notice that there hasn't been a single repair item in the list other than this, which gives auto repair. But there's nothing in the, in the here that adds to repair, which is kind of sad. A stat that got forgotten again for another expansion. Oh, well. They don't have a lot of Warforged in Barovia, so it makes sense. Now we have another Rune Arm Suppressive Fire. I didn't even talk about the Warden Scribe's Pendant because just look at it. Then we have Suppressive Fire. Now this is an Exploding Cannon Shot. And in fact, it's very similar. It's just this one, instead of giving... Um, com uh, was it insightful or quality combustion and crit this gives fear immunity and fire resistance but they're effectively the same item so depending on where you get your fire stats um, you may want to use the fear immunity effect instead interesting interesting though why can't i use this what oh kindred spirit oh this is pet armor oh shit kindred spirit light armor this is pet armor Fortification, it's, this is for your dog. Oh. And both Iron Defenders and Wolves can use Kindred Spirit. That's cool. I did not know that. All right, let's look at this item here. See how this looks. Is this new? I don't think this is a new item. I feel like there's, this item is somewhere else in the game. 
So we're gonna we're gonna pass on this. But I feel like it's somewhere else in the game. So that's kinda cool. Alrighty. So now we're gonna get to weapons. So this is the Ravenloft weapon suite. So the Ravenlofts are all called Barovian whatever. And they have like whatever stats on them. And they don't work, and I think all these are broken. Um, because when you equip the items, they don't function properly. Like, this one's level 29. A lot of them have no minimum level. They don't function properly. So that's why I didn't want to really look over the weapons, because a lot of them just don't do anything. Macabre thing. Like, I don't know. Some stats. And also, I think the stats are all wrong. Like, a plus 15 item for level 10? I don't think so. So, we're not really going to look at the weapons, because they're not really there. They don't exist. They're all fake. It's fake news. It's fake news.